Hello everybody, this is Kristen from Christopia Studios. Today I'm going to be doing part two of the uh, horse swipe that I'm getting ready to do. Last video we did the background which was just kind of a hint of trees and and the sand in the corral for for the first part of this. Today we're going to do the tracing of the horse that we're going to put down. I took a photo of a beautiful horse from pmpart.com. It's paint my photo. I will link this below. Um, this is a great website to find photos on. They do ask that if you're using their photo, you give them attribution um, in somewhere in your video or whatever. But if you're just painting their photo, it's free photo to paint. But they like to see your painting in the end. They like you to share it with them. Anyway, it's a great website, and this is a beautiful horse I got from there. Um, I'll link it below. I printed the photo, and then I blew it up about 200% to trace it and get it transferred to the painting. Um, I'm going to be putting a full tutorial up in the future, but if you want to trace this image too, you can easily go to the link below and print that image for yourself. Just remember that if you create a painting from the image, you're encouraged to show it to the photographer no problem at all. So let's get on with this particular painting and I'll show you how I get the image transferred down. And by the way, anybody who thinks that it's not true artistry to trace something just doesn't really understand that even the masters of old used prisms and other ways to, to get their artwork onto something that they could trace around it for. It's just a matter of trying to get things into the right places. So even if you um, are one of those people whose art teacher taught you somehow that this was not real art, just, you know, try to forget all that stuff and do your own art and be happy about it. So I've traced the image of the horse. I've probably done a little more than I, than I could have, but that's all right. And I'm going to use, instead of a dark graphite paper to transfer the image down onto canvas, you're not going to be able to see it. So I have this Sorol transfer paper. It's yellow. And so the graphite is good for tracing onto light colors. The white is good for like reverse work and stuff on dark fabrics and so is the yellow and the yellow also works well on on slick surfaces like metal which is why i got this because you never know i might be painting on something that's not canvas in the future so anyway it's still a transfer paper it's just a different color so i'm going to tape this down underneath and I have forgotten to grab my tape. Duh. Now a lot of people will only take, um, I'm in my studio with the door shut, by the way, because the cats seem to want to come and keep me company. And I don't, I don't really have time for that right now. <laughs> so um, I've shut them out. They are not amused. But a lot of people like to tape the whole thing down to trace over it. I pr prefer myself to only tape the top. And I want to make sure that my horse is in the right spot because obviously some of the horse is going to be in front of the greenery and some of it's going to be running on the sand in the corral. And I want to make sure the feet are all in the corral area. So this is probably a good spot for it. So I'm going to take my tracing paper down and I'm gonna do it only at the top for this paper because I don't want, did I get my head in the way again? I hope not. I'm trying to not do that anymore. I don't want people looking at the back of my head. Um, but I only trace, I only tape at the top that way as I work, I can continue to kind of look and make sure that my marks are transferring. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape this as well. And this is masking tape, so it'll come off really easily and it won't pull up paint from your canvas or anything like that. So you don't have to worry about it. But 
I'm going to make sure my horse is where I want him to be. And this is an Andalusian breed. I don't know a lot about the breed except that they were bred um, in the area of Spain, I think. And they were bred to be war horses. They have beautiful manes, beautiful tails, and very, very stocky build up front. They're, they're strong, but they were also built to be faster too and be... Um, they work well from what I understand doing dressage and jumping and stuff like that. I always only rode Western, so I don't know anything about dressage, except that I like to watch it sometimes. Um, but for anybody who wanted to know the breed, that's what it is. So I am just going to take my pencil, and in fact, I think I'm going to use a different color so that I know where I've traced. Um, so I'm going to use, I'm going to use this little green pen I have, and I'm going to test first to make sure that my tracing is going down. So I'm just running that pen. It doesn't even matter if it marks well or not, because I don't need that. And I'm just making sure that it's marking. And it is. It's a very light mark. I'm not sure if you can see it, but that's what it's doing. It's just marking my tracing onto the canvas. It does not have to be perfect. We are not going for realism here, even though my tracing is pretty realistic. I'm just going for an impression because this horse isn't going to be just painted in detail. It's going to be a swipe. It's going to be a paint pour controlled swipe. Um, I, I want the abstractness of it. So I'm just putting in the hints of what's there. I do want the abstractness of it, but later I also want to make sure that my eye is placed properly. So after this draw, after the pour dries, I will also trace the eye back over again and make sure it's in the right spot before I paint any details over the pour. But we're just getting the shape of that horse. Those of you who don't want any detail inside, you just want to do a swipe. Um, just do the, just draw around the silhouette. You don't have to draw any of these markings inside or trace any of those inside markings if you don't want to because your pour alone is still going to look awesome when you're done because you're swiping colors onto it. I think I'm going to do not white per se, but a very light, light gray, maybe a dappling on the coat um, in my paint. So we'll see, but I'm going to go ahead and speed this up so that you don't have to spend your entire time watching me trace this horse and I will come back when it's done and we'll talk about the next step. So what, what we've done already, as you know, is we have put down the outline of the horse that we're going to swipe, and this is going to be a controlled swipe. And I've decided to make this horse kind of a, a dapple gray color. It's not um, going to be the same color as the photo reference I'm referencing, uh, which is a pretty white horse. Um, but I wanted some variation in color. So... I have some black here, and I also kind of want some dapples, so I am definitely going to put some silicone in the paint to get some cells to mimic dapples. So I have black, and I'm going to put, and I have these tiny little cups because it's not going to take a lot of paint to swipe this. In fact, I'm probably going to have some left over, and I'll just make another painting before I put everything away. Fuji X just ripped. 
on my horse. That is not something I want because the paint won't adhere to the canvas. That's there. So I'm just going to mix it in and I'm mixing more usually if I do just one drop of the OGX hair serum. This is a coconut hair serum. It is a silicone based product and the first ingredient is dimethicone. But this is a much better smelling silicone. This is why I use it. Plus it's also good for your hair, but um, it doesn't it doesn't make me choke and I, I like it better. Um, usually I only put one drop in and I only mix maybe two times through, but this time I wouldn't mind a few smaller cells since this horse isn't that big. And I'm gonna do that with every single paint I have and then I'll show you the paint. As I'm mixing it. This is a big canvas, so it takes up a lot of room in the camera. And I'll get I'll get out of the light in a minute too. I'm standing up and I'll be sitting down in a minute. So I'm gonna there's I had black, I have white, I have a metallic silver, which I think will look kind of awesome in the coat of the horse. And all these are pretty normal colors you'd find in a dapple gray so far, right? I have a regular kind of a steel gray. I have now, now we get into some colors that are not normal. This is a violet purple with a tiny bit of metallic color in it for shine. And then I have a cobalt blue, which I'm going to use just a tiny itty bitty bit in the horse. It's going to show through and it's not a natural color, but I'm not looking for natural colors here. So that's all right. So we're going to stir that bad boy up. And then we're going to be about swiping. Now, I don't, I don't have a formula like some other artists have to mix Floetrol or Liquitex pouring medium or whatever pouring medium they're using with their color. I have a formula for how I want the color to flow. So if you see how the color is pouring off my little stick here, it's mounding a little bit more than I want it to. So I'm just going to take a little droplet of color and move around the sides. So my head doesn't get stuck in the camera range. And I'm just going to Squirt a tiny bit of clean water in there because this blue is a little thicker than I want it to be. Now it's not making a big mound anymore. It's disappearing into the paint, which is exactly what I want. All the other colors, we're doing that. They're beautiful. They're just disappearing right in. But that's the kind of consistency I want. It's usually um, using the pouring medium and mixing enough color in to get good color saturation and then um, making sure it falls into the cup without creating a big old mound in there. That's kind of what I want. So let's get about painting this horse.
Okay, so I've given this a couple days to dry. Since the paint was so thick, it took a couple days. I really do like the cell action going on in the swipe. I do not, however, care for the amount of blue that showed up. This is supposed to be kind of a white gray horse with a few blue shadows, <laughs> but it turns out it's a, it's a blue horse. So the first thing I'm going to do, and my hands are cold. My sister knitted me these, aren't they cute? Um, the first thing that I'm gonna do with this is I'm going to do a little bit of a whitewash. Um, so some of the blue it shows, but is still toned down. I'm gonna use a very light gray watered down and just kind of tone that blue down a little bit so it doesn't quite look um, like the horse has been painted. I mean, like the actual horse has been painted blue. Um, I do love the little cells though that I'm getting. That'll look really nice for a dappling effect once I um, put in the fine details. And that's what we're gonna do next. 